What's up you guys, it's Matt here. So we need to talk to you guys about uh, AMC a little bit, um, exactly what happened today and um, you know what we had to go through uh, throughout the whole entire day. Now I was watching in the pre-market, didn't really watch um, obviously a lot that was happening in the market open. I did check in from time to time as I was going through my daily you know, you know, know, work schedule, the meetings, all the stuff I needed to do. So I appreciate you guys um, stopping by the stream. Whoever did stop by the stream, you guys are amazing. Uh, people that joined as members, uh, if you want to join as a member, remember to hit that link uh, down below. Also, if you want to join the Discord group as well, that link is in the description. But let's look at what did happen today. We're going to be breaking down uh, the price action today, my predictions and how they went, and also going into maybe some of my predictions for tomorrow, the volume for today, and um, as well as the short interest data when it comes to Ortex and Fintel and all that stuff. So, uh, like I said, before we get started, make sure you guys hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Uh, also, check out some of the links in the description if you want to follow my reaction channel. Definitely do that. I do a lot of reactions on AMC, on financial stuff, everything, um, and that's definitely taking off. So, let's jump into this. Um, we're going to see that when we um, started live in the morning, um, I didn't really start at my normal time at 5. I started at about 6.30. Um, at 6.30, we did see it um, increase a little bit, then started to fall off. Um, you know, towards the towards the seven o'clock mark, uh, to where it ended up uh, falling down to about thirty seven, and that's where I was thinking that that might end up being a key a key point or a key spot to where we would see a a a good support. Um, we did end up seeing this uh, increase to about uh, thirty eight on the um, eight oh one run. Once you see it hit eight oh one, that's where you have a lot of brokerage accounts that are moving um, that end up opening up, and you see that uh, you know end up getting a, a lot of volume within that one minute, which you see here, if you look up top, 171,000 shares worth of volume. So then we've seen it uh, kind of consolidate a little bit. Um, I stopped uh, streaming somewhere around nine, where it did end up making a little bit of a move up. <clears throat> and somebody asked my, or a bunch of people asked my predictions. Every single morning you ask my predictions. A lot of times I end up getting them right um, within the dollar. I don't really break it down by the cents a lot. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, but I, I try to stick to like the dollar figure and where I think it's going to go. And I did say that I was going to see it. I believe we were going to see it go down to about 37, where that key point was around 37. And then we would see it increase and resist away from 40 to where it would pull back a little bit. But then I did say that it would go up to about 42, that it would surpass the 40 mark. It didn't go up to 42. It went up to about 40, uh, 41, let's say uh, 40 and a half. Uh, 40.62 cents. I don't think I'm saying that right. $40 and 62 cents. Um, and then it ended up uh, coming back a little bit to where it did increase up to $40 and 84 cents um, of a high to where it did fall back a little bit and start to consolidate um, a little bit. Uh, towards the end of the day, we did see a little bit of a jump, a little bit of a rise from that 39 mark all the way up to, uh, you know, a high here of $40.30 $40 uh, to where it did close about $40.35, about 9% up. So it was definitely a good day. It wasn't the most amazing day, but it was a solid day. Growing by 9% is not bad. We had a we had an opening price of $38.48. We did, um, you know, hit a high of $40.84, finished a little bit lower than that at you know uh, forty dollars and thirty five cents, and we had volume that was pretty decent, around a hundred million shares worth of volume, ninety seven million uh, shares worth of volume, um, <clears throat> which is about you know what twenty percent of the overall float. Uh, so it wasn't a bad day. All like if we look at it as a whole. It could have been better if we would have never had pullbacks, and we understand why the pullbacks are coming. You have a couple of you know um, uh, day traders and swing traders that are involved into it as well, um, but it's not enough to pull it back that far. You obviously have a lot of shorts that are going through, and uh, that really brings us into some of the Ortex data. So we get into the Ortex data, we can see that um, the short interest of free float is around 14.64 percent or 74.88 million. We understand that this may be um, wrong because it's estimated. You know, when you have something that that's estimated, you obviously have room in between where it is and, you know, um, where it actually is, you know, whether it's up or down, we understand that it is a lot higher. But um, we're sticking with what we have here just to go with some data and understand, um, you know, maybe just 
um, how it's moving, I guess. Because uh, if it's 74 here then and it's moving up to uh, 78, we understand that if it's 200, we'll move it the same percentage, basically. So that's the way that I'm taking it. Um, but we can look at the borrowed shares. They borrowed out uh, 3.7 million and they returned 4.68 million, which brings the short interest change down by about a million, <clears throat> a million shares. You can see utilization did go up. It's up to 88 um, and you have shares on loan at 95.5 million. Now, like I said, uh, this is all estimated. And when we look at these numbers, we're like, how does this really make sense? If they're constantly shorting a lot, how does this make sense? And I mean, the way that I look at it is I can't make sense of it because when I go into the Fintel data, it's telling me a lot of uh, different uh, differences. So we can see the short interest of free float um, is around 15%. So it's close to where that actually is a 14.64%. Um, obviously, you're looking at like kind of a lag when you do look at this stuff. Um, when we look at the short, the shorts that are going through, and this is just taking it off of the total volume that they have, not the total volume that goes as a whole. I don't know what Fintel is doing, but Fintel is not including the total volume that we do see on um, the normal chart. So I don't understand what they're going with, but I'm going with what they actually have here and looking at just FINRA data. And you could see that, let's just say they're shorting 37.77% of the position. Shorting 37% of the position um, is crazy. And that's, it, it may be 37%, um, of the overall, um, you know, combined volume, because when we add the combined volume here, this doesn't equal to what I'm showing on Weeble. So I know that something is missing from this portion, but it does show the uh, CBOE short volume and it does show the FINRA short volume. So you add that up, that adds to what, 28, uh, 28 million, almost 29, almost 29 million. Um, looking at that, um, you can see that actually it's less than that but looking at that you can see that this um doesn't really make sense 29 million shares that's going through and they're covering what 4 million right they're covering 4.68 million does that mean that you know we're losing the amount of shorts or should we be gaining the amount of shorts that are out there well they should actually that should increase we should see an increase uh in those shorts and i'm just not getting that i don't know why um i'm not really getting it but it it's clear to me that something's going on to where they're shorting a lot more than what we're actually seeing in front of our face um and this is just worried about the shares that you're borrowing remember you could borrow these shares and return these shares all you want borrowing the shares is not necessarily shorting it um borrowing the shares could be a, a you know a bunch of things but you're borrowing these shares <clears throat> you're returning these shares but they're shorting a hefty amount of shares every single day um you know tens of millions of shares sometimes hundreds of millions of shares depending on how high the volume goes so that's where I stand with this. I mean, we obviously know there's something wrong. The SEC knows there's something wrong. They're not doing anything about it. We understand there's a dark pool situation that's happening. We understand a lot of different things that are that are taking place that does not make sense to me and does not make sense to a lot of people. So ultimately, not going to complain because it was a bad day. The only reason I'm going to complain is because it should be a lot higher. We should see we should see a 30 40, 50% day, 100% day, 200% day. We have yet to see a, a really, really large day. Like we've seen days where it got up to 100, 100%, right? But then we've seen an instant uh, pullback from that and it ended up finishing below 100%. Granted, it was 90 something percent that it did finish at, but it should have been a lot higher than that, but it's consistently being pulled back by these shorts. Just know when they start to cover that it's not going to be to a point to where um, they're going to pull this thing back. When you see the FOMO buying go through, then you know they can always pull this back with more shorts. However, um, when they start to cover, there's not going to be any type of pullbacks. Uh, there's going to be halts, you know, to where you do stop and consolidate a little bit, to where um, maybe. They decide they're not going to cover as many shorts right now, and you see it consolidate, which they try and scare people off. Instead of um, instead of reshorting, they're just going to stop uh, stop uh, you know covering, and then you're going to see that you know stay flat a little bit until they start covering again. So um, I know we'll see those points, and uh, maybe we'll see some people sell off at those points. That's a possibility. But right now, AMC is in a good spot. I believe AMC is in a good spot. Uh, we have a lot of uh, positive news that's going on, and uh, 
obviously we're going to get into crypto in another video but guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button let me know what you think about amc and what we're going to do this week we're due for a really good week not just worrying about a 20 percent day and then everything else decides to increase after that we're talking about uh, a 10% day, 20% day, 50% day, 100% day. That's what we need um, in this position. So anyways, let me know your opinion. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell for more videos like this one. Check out some of my links in the description. Guys, follow my Twitch too. Uh, I created a Twitch to where I um, stream on there just in case YouTube decides to silence me and you do follow me. Go over on Twitch and you know uh, follow me there or you could follow my other YouTube channels, which I'm not sure if uh if they do ban you i believe if they ban you then you you all of your channels get banned so we'll see how this plays out but uh i'm gonna get out of here and i will catch you guys in the next video